has had a huge impact on the world, including on ongoing HIV prevention, care, and treatment efforts. Community testing was interrupted. Uptake of pre-exposure prophylaxis slowed. Supply chains for HIV medications were disrupted and labs diverted their efforts to COVID testing so that the turnover of viral load results slowed. Adaptation has become critical to ensuring that HIV programs still have the tools they need to continue to progress toward epidemic control during these COVID times. I'm Hallie Mahler, Director of HIV Programs for FHI 360. And in this program, we're going to share some of the many ways that FHI 360 staff, our local partners from the private, nonprofit, and public sectors, and people living with HIV, including key population members, have adapted in impressive ways so that they can continue to deliver essential services that mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on HIV programs. We will also touch on how communities mobilized for HIV programs are organizing to serve other essential needs of their members during the pandemic. First up on our tour is the SIDHAS project in Nigeria, where service delivery and client-centered approaches brought HIV treatment services, sometimes right to the client's doorstep. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Lushala Sanwu. I'm Director of Prevention, Care and Treatment on the FHI 360-led SIDAS project. SIDAS stands for Strengthened Integrated Delivery of HIV and AIDS Services. And we're currently implementing the project in two states in Nigeria. With me today is my colleague, Dr. Nwa Kuru. So Pius, can you please tell us a little bit about the SIDAS community-based model, service delivery model currently being implemented in our home state? Part of what we needed to do in terms of our surge implementation was to develop what we call the community ART management team. Uh, prior to 2019, um, the team, um, the state has been implementing majorly facility-based intervention. But with the surge implementation, we had to move further into the community, um, taking services closer to the clients. Um, so part of what we needed to do was to develop a new model, which we call the community ART management team, which has a more or less a mobile team, which has a clinician, a pharmacist, um, a lab scientist, um, a counselor tester, and um, a case manager, all in one team, moving within the communities and also helping to uh, um, identify cases, initiate them in the community, and also ensure that they stay virally suppressed by collecting those samples from the clients within the community. That sounds very interesting, Pius. So in other words, what you're saying is that whatever the clients want, you give the clients as we get the HIV services. So can you tell me how FHI 360 CEDAS project, how they adapted the HIV service provision during the pandemic? The opening up our community structures means that we needed to open up pickup points um, so that um, it's at close proximity to clients. Um, at the time, we had about 500 pickup points on the CEDAS project which across our 21 LGA. This was scaled up to about 2,000 plus uh, pickup points, and this enabled us to do a lot of drug distributions. Part of what we did using our community ART management team was to comment what we call the home refill. Uh, for home refills, basically it was using the community ART management team to be able to provide ARVs to clients in their homes. Um, these are clients who on their own naturally would not have been able to visit the healthcare facility because of the lockdown, because of the restrictions, and um, um, these services was brought closer to them. Um, outside that, we also opened up a lot of community interventions, including the CPAP. The CPAP is Community Pharmacy ART Refill Program, whereby we use community pharmacists um, to be able to do uh, a bit of these drug distributions and then provide those services to the client at close proximity to them. For the community ART refill groups, we have a group of about five to 20 persons who have disclosed to each other, come together as a group, and they take turns on their own to come to the healthcare facility to pick up drugs for each other. We also had to open up um, access into our creeks um, and uh, marine areas. What we had to do was to also deploy a good logistic system whereby we community health management team pick up drugs from the healthcare facility, moves this drug through a ferry system over the creek and um, marine, and then takes this drug to our, those pickup points that have already been set up in those areas and then we do the drug distributions. Sounds very interesting. All in all, how did all these interventions affect your performance during the year that just went by? Okay, so basically with all these interventions, what it did for us was to enable us to keep our retention at a very good point. Um, retention currently on the CEDAS project is 99%, uh, which means virtually every client who have been initiated on treatment are currently um, um, receiving their treatment as, as at when due. So this is something it helped us to do. 
And I'm very happy that we have a colleague of ours who can also give an example of how it actually impacted, the service delivery actually impacted her personally. At this point, I will transfer over to my colleague, Mabel, to please speak. My name is Mabel. I'm 24 years old. So we are talking about them um, during the COVID-19 season. During that season of COVID-19, we don't go out at all. We remain at home. And even the, the policemen, they were everywhere, pursuing people, chasing people. They couldn't allow people to be moving up and around. So I didn't go to anywhere. I just remain at home. I normally, before the COVID-19, I, I always pay my transport to the hospital and collect my drugs from them, from the facility. Then after the COVID-19, they started bringing it for me at home. And my doctors normally come for checkup at, and they normally come to me and meet me at home. So I don't go to anywhere and I like the way they were doing. I like the way they were doing because I don't go to anywhere. They will always call me on phone asking me if I've, if I've been taking my drugs frequently. Um, the drugs is very good. And I started taking the drugs. I wasn't like this. I was very sick. And all, all over my body was, um, there was um, rashes on my skin. So now, since I started using the drugs, I'm very healthy, just like the way you can see me now. So I'm good. It's great to hear Mabel's story. Nigeria's SIDHAS project isn't the only program rapidly adapting to provide HIV medicines through home-based delivery. In Indonesia, FHI 360's linkages and EPIC programs collaborated with the Provincial Health Office in Jakarta to create Jack Anter, which provides safe and secure delivery of HIV medicines from facility to client via ride-based apps or transport courier services. Take a look at this video about Jack Anter. Karena jauh, waktu saya juga mepet, ya di situ saya sangat merasa sulit karena waktu saya juga kan kerja pun sudah terhenti, kan dia ditutup, sempat ditutup juga karena lockdown kan, sempat ditutup kerjanya. Jadi di awal masa pandemi COVID-19 ini terjadi kekhawatiran para ODIF untuk datang ke layanan karena mereka takut tertular COVID-19. Dan juga dengan adanya COVID-19 ini meningkatkan beban kerja daripada para teman-teman di layanan kesehatan dan juga adanya e, pembatasan kunjungan di layanan kesehatan. Oleh sebab itu, e, kami menciptakan Jack Anter ini yang gunanya untuk menjaga retensi ODIF dalam mengakses layanan ARV. Sebenarnya dari Kementerian Kesehatan sudah memberikan kebijakan untuk multiman dispensing. Namun sayangnya di kala itu e, stok ARV di kami tidak mencukupi untuk melaksanakan multiman dispensing dan Cek Anter sebagai tumpuan kami dalam menjaga retensi ODIF agar mereka bisa mengakses ARV di layanan. Untuk awalnya sih kaget se, apa ya harus bilang lagi Jakarta ini apa kedampingan tapi lama kelamaan itu bakal itu menguntungkan juga bagi kami yang mendampingi dan bagi penerima manfaat. Untuk di awalnya e, masih apa ya masih beberapa orang tetapi saya selalu mikirkan ini bagus dampaknya buat ke kita juga buat kedampingan juga itu yang pertama yang kedua. Uh, saya aman, dokter juga aman, terus petugas yang lain aman karena uh, yang berkunjung ke layanan semenjak ke Jakantar itu uh, udah terbilang sedikit terus yang ketiganya juga dampingan 
merasa nggak was-was keluar rumah maksudnya keluar rumah karena obatnya telah kita antarkan sangat membantu jadi kalau secara uh, package ya skala secara uh, semuanya nih si diet antar ini memang memiliki efisiensi dan efektivitas yang cukup baik ya dalam proses akses uh, teman-teman odif mengakses ARV nya dimana si Odif pun uh, terbantu ke layanan kami mendapatkan tetap mendapatkan ARV tanpa harus khawatir resiko penularan COVID. Kemudian dari kami sendiri di layanan juga sangat terbantu karena uh, dengan adanya jarak antar walaupun ada hambatan di masa pandemi kami tetap bisa memastikan bahwa uh, teman-teman Odif tersebut uh, mengakses layanan kami tidak putus obat. Kemudian kepatuhan mereka tetap kita bisa pantau melalui sistem online. Karena jujur saja ya, dengan ada jejak antar secara tidak langsung yang mereka yang tidak pernah meng-online kami untuk berkonsultasi secara online dengan ada jejak antar secara tidak langsung mereka bisa berkomunikasi, berkonsultasi kepada kami mengenai apa yang menjadi hambatan selama pandemi kemudian kondisi kesehatan mereka juga bisa terpantau melalui proses online tersebut sekaligus kita bisa mengefektifkan dan mengefisiensikan proses jejak antar ini sehingga si Uh, ARV itu diterima langsung dengan baik oleh teman-teman uh, Odif tersebut jadi uh, sangat membantu ya kalau secara package-nya ya mulai dari A sampai Z mulai dari kami sebagai pemegang program atau pelaksana program begitu juga uh, bagi teman-teman Odif sejak awal kita identifikasi uh, COVID menjadi salah satu potensi masalah yang bisa menjadi uh, menjadi ancaman pada keberlangsungan program yang lain, maka program HIV berusaha untuk melakukan inovasi supaya ODIF yang saat itu sudah dalam pengobatan bisa tetap berobat tetapi tidak berisiko untuk tertular COVID karena mereka harus datang ke fasilitas kesehatan atau harus melakukan aktivitas yang lebih sering. Dan tentunya setelah kita melihat proses ini cukup panjang dalam beberapa bulan kita harapkan alternatif ini bisa menjadi salah satu penguatan dalam program pengendalian HIV saya merasa terbantu banget dengan adanya program jet Anter waktu saya nggak terganggu kerjaan saya juga nggak terganggu saya merasa lebih mudah ya merasa lebih ringan aja gitu dalam menghadapi penyakit HIV jet Anter antar obat nggak perlu muter What a great adaptation of existing technology and transport services to serve key populations. What's more is that these services are also discreet. We spoke behind the scenes with Dr. Mano and Dr. Irvin, who were featured in the video, to get a sense of what the Jack Anter service delivery innovation has meant to them. Hi everyone, my name is Herta Putri. I'm the Knowledge Management and Communication Specialist at EPIC Indonesia. With me now, there are two of the doctors that will give more explanations about the Jack Ant's innovation created under linkages now EPIC. My first question will be for Dr. Mono. In the video, we saw that you mentioned about the concern about people living with HIV, you know, coming to health service during the COVID-19. Could you please bring us back to that time and how was it like for you? Baik, terima kasih Mbak Tia. Saya akan menjawab dengan bahasa. Jadi ketika terjadi pandemi COVID, khususnya ketika di DKI Jakarta ini diterapkan kebijakan PSBB, kami berpikir ini akan menjadi permasalahan dalam pelaksanaan program HIV. Khususnya kami berpikir di triple nanti yang kedua yaitu adalah eh, orang dengan HIV mendapatkan pengobatan RV. Di sini kami fokus di sana, kami berharap eh, triple nanti kedua ini tidak eh, terganggu sehingga kami berpikir agar bisa menjalankan program HIV ini khususnya pada pengobatan RV. Terima kasih Mbak Tia. Can you please explain to me and the audience what inspired you to create that Jack Anton? Ketika PSBB ini diterapkan, kami Dinas Kesehatan melakukan brainstorming dengan teman-teman dari layanan dan juga teman-teman dari LSM, di mana kami mendapatkan bahwa ketika PSBB ini dilaksanakan akan terjadi kendala yaitu pengobatan ARV di layanan. Karena ketika PSBB dilakukan, orang-orang tidak boleh keluar dari rumah, kendaraan umum pun tidak berjalan, sehingga kami berpikir bahwa kita perlu melakukan inovasi di mana ARV ini dikirimkan melalui jasa kurir. Dan kami mengeluarkan surat edaran 
kepada layanan agar uh, ARV ini boleh dikirimkan melalui kurir tanpa harus datang ke layanan ODIF-nya. Nah, di tengah perjalanan ini ternyata Linkages menyambut baik dan Linkages memberikan dukungan atau support-nya uh, melalui un- uh, anggaran mereka meng- untuk memberikan support jasa pengiriman ARV ini. Dan kami menyebutnya dengan nama Jack Hunter. Seperti itu, Matiak. What was your strategy in the beginning that can convince people living with HIV community to adapt and use the service, Dr. Evan? Initially, uh, the reception for the Jack Hunter was excellent. I don't think there is denial from the community because the community itself feel the, the benefit from the Jack Hunter. Like Dr. Mono said that during the social restriction time, people uh, cannot travel and then they have sort of concerns uh, about how to access their ARV and then still adhere with their medications. But we address that uh, by sending the medications ARV directly to, to their houses. So what's the next plan of this uh, Jack Antar uh, innovation? Because it was created uh, for the pandemic. What happened later if pandemic is over? Thank you, Mbatia. So under EPIC project, we hope that we can scale uh, Jack Antar up through the greater Jakarta as well. And I hope uh, with, with our support in designing the SOPs and delivering the program, we can scale it up on the national level so that more people living with HIV can benefit it from, from the Jakarta. That's all the questions from me. Thank you for joining me here, Dr. Mono and Dr. Irvin. Access to HIV treatment is one important component to HIV service delivery, but we've also had to ensure that HIV prevention services are readily available. In Iswatini, this means ensuring that people have had access to PrEP throughout the pandemic. Hi, I'm Laura Musart with FHI 360 Eswatini, and I'm getting the opportunity to talk with some of our key population partners, House of Our Pride and Help Plus for Men, about some of the innovative ways that they were able to ensure continuity of prevention and prep services during COVID. I'm David Masego from House of Our Pride. Through the, the COVID era, which has also affected the, our country at large since COVID has been one of our national disasters, we had to make sure that we still focus on the main objectives of the of the program. We had seen most clients that were low risk before, and during this period, they, 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 they tend to be high risk because there was a lot, a lot of exposure to HIV within this world. We still want to keep those clients that are negative, negative within this, this era. For PrEP and prevention, we, we had to change some few strategies. One, we had to engage PrEP ambassadors to reach out to, to their peers or to promote PrEP. Uh, we as Hub for Women has been creating demand. Mainly our work was uh, community engagement, which was mostly physical. But due to the pandemic, we had to migrate from physical community engagement to a virtual modality. We have seen the online program doing amazing work during this, this COVID period. Of course, we also uh, encourage our to workers to, to utilize the social media platform, whereby we've, had, we've been posting messages daily, weekly, monthly on PrEP. Model is engaging our PrEP ambassadors that will be working the online network and reaching high-risk clients through our WhatsApp groups, Facebooks, and other social media platforms to create demand for the PrEP drug. For us, during the, the, the COVID era, one main uh, objective was to make sure that we, we, we ensure safety amongst our staff. But we also wanted to ensure that we still provide comprehensive services to our targeted group. Lunger, can you tell us um, your experiences with PrEP during COVID? As a trans woman, um, when whenever we wanted to come to town, we had to produce our identity cards. And my identity card is has M on it, and I present as a woman. So I would encounter problems with the police and, you know, discrimination and stigma is very high in this country. So what House of Our Pride did for me was they would, I'd, I'd go online and book my, my appointment and whatever, and then they'd come and deliver my pills for me. So uh, they were really helpful during that stressful time for me as well. And prevention is so important for me because I want to be healthy. I want to live long. So I just think prevention is better than cure. 
Thank you for all the hard work from all of our KP partners, especially Hoop and Helpless for Men, who really worked hard to create some innovative ways to ensure that prevention and prep still were able to be accessed by those that needed it most. Hallie, off to you. Thanks. In Thailand, our partners expanded their work going online to reach key populations during COVID-19 to help ensure social distancing. I hopped online for a partner panel discussion earlier this week to talk about how COVID-19 impacted key populations in Thailand and how three local partner organizations adapted innovative online solutions to keep their staff and program participants protected. Well, I'm so excited now to have with me a panel of our colleagues and collaborators in Thailand from Swing M Plus and IHRI. Sawadika, can you tell us a little bit about um, which populations you're working with in Thailand and how has COVID-19 affected your work? ผู้ประชากรเหล่านี้ครับผมก็ได้รับผลกระทบเป็นเรื่องของการเข้าถึงบริการเป็นอย่างมากนะผมคือนอกจากเขาจะได้รับผลกระทบทางด้านเศรษ
our transgender clients were not familiar with the online channels uh, due to many re reasons. For example, lots of transgender people, when they're experiencing um, with the economic um, vulnerability, their lack of employment. So um, some cases, they don't have even the money to afford for mobile phone or the internet. So that's why we have to make sure that um, our transgender clients can access to these um, services without the interrupting from the mobile phone um, affordability. And one of the approach that we uh, recently launched or implemented at the Tantrin Clinic is that we encourage our transgender client to do self-sampling collection for gonorrhea and chlamydia testing. While we wanted to maintain social distancing for our healthcare providers at the Tantrin Clinic, we initiated the new normal for the self-sampling collection for gonorrhea and chlamydia for our transgender clients. And it's very successful in the past um, few months and I think it will become the new normal soon. Well, that's really a wonderful example of um, uh, putting patients that are in charge of their own self-care. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Cobb, can you talk a little bit about um, other than going online, what other strategies are you using right now during COVID-19 for the clients that you're working with? ต้องบอกว่าที่ผ่านมาเนี่ยเราแบ่งรูปแบบของการนำออนไลน์เข้ามาใช้มีการทำงานใน3ส่วนด้วยกันครับก็คืออันแรกเลยเนี่ยเรื่องของรูปแบบของการเข้าถึงครับก็คือการลิสต์การรีคูดครับผมก็ใช้เครื่องมือเหล่านี้ครับผมเข้ามาช่วยในการเข้าถึงกลุ่มประชากรที่มีความเสี่ยงเดตติ้งแอดต่างๆที่กลุ่มประชากรเราเนี่ยเข้าไปใช้ในการพูดคุยกันเนี่ยชักชวนแล้วก็แนะนําข้อมูลทั้งเรื่องของ HIV เรื่องของบริการแล้วก็รวมถึงเรื่องของโควิดด้วยในช่วงนี้ครับผมอันที่2เนี่ยเราใช้ระบบเทคโนโลยีเข้ามาช่วยหรือว่าเราเรียกว่าระบบเรื่องของเทเลเฮลนะครับเข้ามาช่วยในเรื่องของการให้บริการก็คือเรื่องของการบริการตรวจ HIV การให้คําปรึกษาก่อนเข้ามารับบริการเจาะเลือดที่สู่สุขภาพแล้วก็การให้คําปรึกษาเนี่ยหลังบริการเจาะเลือดก็คือหลังจากที่มีการพูดคุยการให้คำปรึกษาผ่านวิดีโอคอลหรือว่าผ่านทางโทรศัพท์แล้วเนี่ยผู้รับบริการก็เข้ามาเจาะเลือดที่สู่สุขภาพโดยที่ไม่ต้องรอฟังผลภายในศูนย์ครับผมหรือว่าแม้แต่ผู้รับบริการที่อยู่ต่างจังหวัดเองที่จะต้องอรับบริการเพปหรือว่าติดตามที่จะรับเพปเนี่ยผมเราก็ใช้รูปแบบของเทเลเฮลเนี่ยเข้ามาช่วยนะครับอันที่3ก็คือเรื่องของระบบการติดตามครับผมก็คือเราเราใช้เทเลเฮลเนี่ยเข้ามาช่วยในเรื่องของการติดตามผู้รับบริการที่ทานเพชรอย่างต่อเนื่องรวมถึงการให้บริการเรื่องของอินเด็กซ์เทสติ้งที่เรากําลังเริ่มทําอยู่ก็คือเรื่องของอการชักชวนคู่ของคนที่มีผลเลือดบวกครับเข้ามาสู่บริการตรวจครับผมโดยรูปแบบของเทเลเฮลเข้ามาช่วยครับผมซึ่งอันเนี้ยเรานําระบบเทคโนโลยีออนไลน์เนี่ยเข้ามาช่วยตั้งแต่การลิสต์รีคูดเทสแล้วก็รวมถึงรีเทนด้วยครับผม Well, that's a lot of different types of online interventions. It's really impressive. Uh, Caesar, let me ask you this. In addition to going online to serve clients, I hear that you've also been expanding your programs to address other issues faced by the, uh, your clients that you also serve with HIV services. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So online intervention for, for transgender women are very different from men who have sex with men. There is not space, specific application or the platform that are very pop popular among the transgender women. However, we know that the transgender community in Thailand has a very network where, where a key opinion list. Normally, we call the mama, big mama, mama sang like this. Play an uh, important role. So Swing has been uh, engaging with many micro influencers who, who are mama to many transgender women. For the examples of bar owner, plastic surgery agents, and the natural key opinion leader to ask them to promote our service to their peer in mm -hmm. with a uh, we call daughter or look style in Thailand. Yes, we are there online channel. For example, Facebook page, private group, and the Twitter in Pattaya City, a capital of the transgender women, is a mama can encourage around the ten to twenty daughter to receive an SAV testing in each it and in each month. 
we find the the big mama with the implement hearing to to join with the Facebook live activity at the swing at the swing clinic. So so the they 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 can uh, use the sign language. And right now we can uh, use the sign language for the for the work with the prevention. If uh, when the the implement hearings or join the clinic, they they can uh, work with. So what the car? Thank you. Like well. Uh, ID cards. How to give? How to give ID cards with the sign language like that? Thank you. Thank you. So all three of you have mentioned that um, in addition to serving people with HIV services, key population members have other needs, especially during COVID. Can each of you talk to me a little bit about what your organizations are doing, looking at the broader needs of key populations that you're working with? Actually, in the case of the COVID, I think. กลุ่มประชากรเราเนี่ยคือเรื่องของบริการสุขภาพด้าน HIV เนี่ยคงจะไม่ไม่ใช่เป็นประเด็นหลักสําคัญเพียงแค่อย่างเดียวแต่ว่าเรื่องของ HIV เองเนี่ยเราก็ต้องให้ข้อมูลควบคู่ไปด้วยแล้วก็รวมถึงของการจัดบริการที่สามารถจัดได้ด้วยเลยครับผมอย่างเช่นเรื่องของการได้คำปรึกษาเรื่องของการให้ข้อมูลที่ถูกต้องเรื่องของการแนะนําสถานที่ตรวจหรือว่าแม้แต่เรื่องของวัคซีนเองผลกระทบต่างๆที่เข้ามาเกี่ยวข้องเนี่ยผมก็จะมีคําถามต่างๆเข้ามามากมายอย่างเช่นเรื่องของการใช้ฮอร์โมนในผู้หญิงข้ามเพศกับการฉีดวัคซีนการทานเพปแล้วจะสามารถช่วยป้องกันการติดเชื้อโควิดได้หรือไม่ครับผมหรือว่าคนที่ทานยาต้านไวรัสอย่างต่อเนื่องแล้วเนี่ยเขาเองเนี่ยอาจจะมีความเสี่ยงน้อยกว่าคนที่ไม่ทานยาต้านหรือเปล่าเนี่ยผมก็จะมีคําถามเหล่านี้ครับเข้ามาเรื่อยๆเจ้าหน้าที่เองเนี่ยที่สะที่จะให้บริการครับเจ้าหน้าที่ชุมชนเนี่ยก็อาจจะต้องมีข้อมูลความรู้เหล่านี้ครับที่อัปเดตขึ้นมาเรื่อยๆแล้วก็สามารถที่จะพูดคุยให้คําปรึกษากับผู้รับบริการหรือกับเพื่อนๆของเราได้เพื่อเขารู้สึกเกิดความสบายใจแล้วก็อย่างน้อยเนี่ยเราเองก็ได้สามได้สามารถได้ช่วยในเรื่องของสังคมเนี่ยช่วยเรื่องของลดการติดเชื้อสําหรับผู้ผู้ที่จะติดเชื้อรายใหม่ของโควิดได้ด้วยครับผม Thank you for that example, Caesar. Why don't you talk to me a little bit about what you're doing? For me, uh, an addition to help the service COVID COVID nineteen pandemic is a uh, uh, sex worker are vulnerable to population livelihoods, especially those uh, with hearing with hearing impairments. In Thailand, current status of the sex worker is uh, illegal and uh, cannot access to any government support. These people are left with no financial support and have uh, become homeless in this dark period. So we have to in in inter- integrate auto health needs as aspect, uh, including food security in our current SIV work in uh, mitigate impact of COVID-19. Wonderful, thank you. And Rina, can you talk to us a little bit about IHRI and and um, what other needs of the populations you're working with? Are you trying to meet right now? Yes. Um, thank you, Harley. I think one of the emerging needs among our key population in Thailand is mental health, and this is something that we are hardly address under the HIV programming. But I think it's in the 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 future or in the near future we have to consider seriously about how to invest or integrate mental health support and intervention into the HIV programming. Because at the Tangerine Clinic, we have seen lots of transgender clients experiencing anxiety, depression, or even suicidal ideation, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think this is very alarming needs from the key populations. Well, thank you. I, I do think that COVID-19 has really accentuated. For everybody, the intersection between uh, psychosocial support and mental health and physical health, and it's great to hear that IHRI is working in that space. I just want to say thank you to all three of you. It's been really FHI 360's pleasure to have worked with all of you for many, many years, um, and to continue to work with you under the Epic Project. I'm so impressed with how all of you have adapted your programs for COVID-19. So congratulations to everybody and kap kunka for this conversation today. Thank you very much. Thank you, kap kunka. Thank you. These creative adaptations are only possible with collaboration and outstanding leadership. For our final segment, I want to turn the spotlight on Bhagwan Sharista. FHI 360's country director for Nepal, whose leadership has been key to helping Nepal overcome COVID-19 supply chain challenges. 
he shares what this experience was like. Uh, namaste, uh, I'm Bhagwan Sresta, uh, country representative for FSI 360 Nepal and project director for uh, EPIC Nepal. Key population and people living HIV faced a lot of challenges accessing HIV services. We had very close uh, coordination and collaboration with government officials in Nepal and India. So we conducted several rounds of meeting in a row. And most challenging part was that we could not meet in person and we had to do these meetings virtually. We collaborated with uh, several government and non-governmental stakeholders, both in India and Nepal, to bring ARB drugs, uh, which was stuck in India because of uh, lockdown in both countries. We trained our uh, staff uh, to provide uh, virtual uh, services and uh, also provided regular on-site coaching and mentoring. The main important thing is uh, our passion and determination uh, for improving health as well as saving lives of key population and people living with HIV that we are uh, serving. So our implementing partner staff as well as our staff um, uh, have also a lot of fear and confusion. We reminded our staff as well as our implementing partner staff we have to be uh, resilient, uh, like to, to deal with the difficult situation. And this is also a wonderful opportunity to serve back to our nation, to serve back to our community, uh, to provide uninterrupted life-saving services during the COVID-19 pandemic. At FHI 360, we have a long-standing history of innovating to find and share creative solutions to contribute to HIV epidemic control. We are now doing the same to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on our HIV programs, partners, staff, and beneficiaries. And in the process, we're also helping to control the spread of COVID-19 in the countries in which we're working. As we look ahead, many of the lessons we're learning from COVID-19 help show what is possible for future infectious disease threats. Thank you for joining us today, and please stay safe.